Import the Target Pro package. You'll notice that Target Pro comes bundled with Unity constraints, which we'll see a little bit more in later demos, and it also comes with Target Pro example files. If you don't want to import these, simply uncheck it. All of the files will come imported under pathological game folders inside the various standard Unity folders. In this demo, we'll run through a basic setup to detect a target in range and run a simple script. In this case, we'll scale up a sphere and change its color. We will also run through the various settings for the perimeter, sorting options, and debug messages. We'll start with a simple scene. I have a sphere here. It just has a red shader on it, so it's easier to see. A cube with nothing on it. A couple lights and a camera, so nothing in the scene yet. We'll start by setting up our target tracker, which is what's going to detect the targets. All of the components are under the pathological menu, target pro, target tracker. Number of targets uh, is for use when you're scripting. This will return uh, your however many targets you want. Uh, if you want to detect three targets in range so you can act on that, for instance, if you're setting up a game with um, a magic attack that can hit three enemies, you might set this to three. Uh, target layers. These are Unity layers, and it's just uh, one more method of squeezing out a little more performance so we don't have to look at the entire scene when we're looking for targetable objects. So we'll also need um, a layer for the perimeter, which I'll explain in a moment. So I'm going to go into layers, and let's just call them enemies. It can be anything you want. And all the target trackers in your scene can share these. Uh, you might want some to detect different uh, objects on different layers, so you might have other layers for your targetables, but it's totally up to your game. So now that I have the layer, I'll set this to enemies. The sorting style, I'll leave it nearest. You have a bunch of options farthest away. Nearest to destination is just uh, 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 if you pass it a list of waypoints, for instance. Uh, Target Pro will measure the distance to all of them and figure out which of the targets in range are either the nearest or farthest and return the number of targets you've requested. Uh, most and least powerful are completely arbitrary. You can use any equation or any integer or anything to determine what is the most or least powerful. It doesn't even have to be powerful. It can be just any arbitrary number that you want to use to figure out uh, what you want to grab that's in range. So again, I'll leave it at the nearest to this target tracker object. The perimeter, if I start the game, actually before we even do that, let's turn on the gizmo and let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're going to get when we start the game. So this is just a gizmo, it doesn't render, it's just to help you set up uh, the area that you want to be able to find targetable objects. You can offset it in position in any direction. Uh, you can rotate it, which you can't really see as if it's a sphere, but if you were using a box, uh, it is 3D, you can set up uh, different sizes. Uh, this wouldn't make sense with a sphere because it's a, a single uh, range radius, uh, but you can do rotational offsets. So let me just reset this. Uh, I'll go back to Sphere, and you'll notice as you switch, uh, Target Pro tries to keep these things the same size. So these values um, are kind of mapped from shape to shape as you switch, just in case, just for ease of use. Uh, let me go back to my top view, and I'll start the game. And as soon as the game starts now, uh, the target tracker will create a perimeter object. It's just a simple collider based on the settings of the perimeter. And that's it. So now let's set up our targetable object so it can be seen by the perimeter. Uh, the first thing we need to do is add it to the layer that we set up. This is the layer we told the target tracker that it needs to look on in order to find objects. 
uh, we also need to add a collider which needs a rigid body to work. It's very important to remember that rigid body because uh, if you forget it, it will look like everything's set up perfectly, but nothing happens. Uh, and this is because uh, Target Pro is based on Unity's collider technology. This is very important because uh, it's, it's a passive system. Uh, nothing happens until something comes in range, and that wakes up Target Pro and gets it starting to do its job. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, I've added a rigid body, I set it to is kinematic. Uh, that's just so the physics system doesn't try to calculate anything for it. I'll add a sphere collider. Any collider will work, but since I have a sphere, I'm going to use a sphere collider. Set it to is trigger. This will mean it won't actually collide with anything. It's only there uh, for detection purposes. And finally, the target pro component, targetable. Uh, and this is the final thing it needs for a perimeter to pay attention to an object. This is also the component that gives us all of our hooks for the events, so when we start writing scripts, uh, we can respond to what's going on in the game. So now, if I start the game, uh, because we don't have any scripts, we won't actually see anything happen. So I'm going to go back to my target tracker and just turn the debug level on normal and start the game. And now when I move my targetable object in range, and I'll pause the game, I get notified that the cube, which is my target tracker, has detected a sphere. It's started the sorting algorithm. And you can see every time it, it runs a sort, it'll print a line. So I'll unpause the game. Just make a couple more of these. And I'll move these into range. And so now you can see as it sorts, we'll see all three enemies and their distance. Now that we're set up, let's make something happen when our sphere game object gets within range of the target tracker. I have a very simple script here. I've called it enemy.cs. Right now you can see that it has really no code in it. It's just a mono behavior uh, with an empty awake function. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my sphere. And now we're going to add some functions to the enemy script and register them with the targetable so they automatically get fired off. A delegate is just a function that you add to an event so that something can trigger the event which then runs your code. You can name a delegate anything you want, but the argument signature must match what's expected. So if you look at the targetable documentation, you'll see the three uh, delegates that this component has available to us uh, on hit, on detected, and on not detected. We're just going to look at the bottom two. You'll notice that the signature has a target tracker source. So we have to make sure that we also provide this argument when we create our function. Let's make a couple very simple functions just to scale the object up and down as it enters and exits range. Just do make me big and we'll use the signature that I got from the docs. And let's also do make me normal with the same signature. So the next thing we need to do is register our delegates with an event so the code actually gets run. And because these events are triggered by our targetable component, we need to get a reference to that component. And if I jump back over to the docs, we'll see we have three functions that come with all delegates, uh, add, set, and remove. Uh, add simply adds your delegate to the list of delegates, which will all get run when the event occurs. Set essentially clears the list and adds the new delegate as the only one, uh, and then you can add on top of that. Remove undetected delegate just removes it from the list. So now I can do targetable dot add on detected delegate, and I'll pass in our function, which is make me big. And I'll also add targetable.add. 
no, no. Add on not detected delegate, and I'll pass in make me normal. So we'll save that and go back to our game. Hit play. And there we go. Adding more delegates is just as easy. I'm just going to paste in a couple functions here to save some time. And these are going to make the sphere green and then reset the color. And now I just need to register these two new functions the same way we did the first two. So a little more copy and paste. I could have just put this code right below my other code and just used one function, but there's really no overhead to doing this. So if it makes sense to organize your code uh, by splitting things out, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it this way. So I'll save that and switch back over to the game. Start it up. And now our sphere is changing green and scaling up as it moves into range and resetting as it moves out. One more thing I wanted to show is if you take the target tracker and move it into the targetable object, it looks like it's not working. What's actually happening is the targetable rigid body is going to sleep because there's nothing asking it to move, there's nothing for it to react to. There are a lot of ways in Unity to wake up rigid bodies, um, but I won't cover them here. Instead, I'm just going to drop on one of the constraints that I know will update it as I move the target uh, the target tracker around. I'm just going to use the look at constraint. Oh, let me stop the game and do it. And I'll use the target tracker's cube as the target. And start the game. And now it'll work. And again, that's just because the rigid body is awake and reacting to the collider objects. Mm -hmm.